Hello and welcome to This Week in Indie Gaming, where in this week's show, we'll share some of our thoughts and analysis on some of the best indie games we've played over the past week, take a glance over some of the upcoming titles that have piqued our interest, and look over the upcoming Stardew Valley tabletop board game, and pick the indie games from Sony's State of Play showcase we're most looking forward to. On that, let's jump right in. The week just gone saw arguably one of the biggest indie game launches of the year so far, when Curse of the Dead Gods came out of early access on February the 23rd. As many people have said to us in the comments section of our preview content of this game and on Twitter, where you can find us via at GetIndieGaming, yes it does look a tad all things Hades, although in all honesty, Try and put that thought to the back of your mind, if not out altogether, which we know is going to be pretty hard. Now, while we didn't receive or in fact ask for a review copy for this one, so far we're around 10 or so hours into it, and based on what others we've spoken to over the past few days have said, that gives us around 15 or 20 or so more hours with it until we're likely to see away the final boss. The coverage you can see here is from quite early in the game, and we wanted to keep kind of spoilers, well, no spoilers at all. As for our first impressions of nearly half a day spent with it, well, it does manage to build upon what was there during the early access period, and we're thinking it will carve itself a niche little plinth within what's most likely one of the most competitive and crowded genres within the whole of the indie gaming landscape. Firstly, a small little gripe, if I may be so bold. One of the things I adored so much about Hades was the persistence in the storytelling and how strong a part of the overall experience it was. I'm a massive fan of story-driven games, as should be self-evident with the content here over the years, and was hoping there would be more meat on the bone with this regard right here, although that's just not the case, with everything being pushed a little to the side and towards the back, with the combat gameplay aspects being fully front and centre. I suspect that's not going to upset too many people, and yet, well, I just hope for something a little bit deeper. Either way, these kind of games, aside from the narrative, live and die by the combat, and there's tweaks here and there that can and does set this one apart from the sea of sameness within such isometric battlers. One thing that sets this one apart is the addition of what's called a corruption meter, which adds a deft bit of difference. This meter fills as you undertake various tasks, such as or oh, even entering a room, buying items, for example, with a blood offering rather than using good old-fashioned coin. Once full, you're hit with a random curse, which can range from something as annoying as a virtual stubbed toe, all the way up to something that can make your run unbelievably hard. So yes, Curse of the Dead Gods is pretty special, and yet with the time we've spent with it so far, it's not likely to topple Hades as the number one game in this genre, for us at least. Although we really are looking forward to playing it for another 20 or so hours to see what happens come the end and if there's any sort of end game worth playing. Moving onwards and something that's super casual, super relaxing and really rather enjoyable. Tiny Traffic came out February 25th on PC by way of Steam with the developer gifting us a key for review purposes. There's nothing too complicated going on here. You are essentially tasked with solving puzzles by way of redirecting traffic to get those little cars from point A to the checkered flag. You do this by altering and moving and rotating blocks in what's a turn-based game with over 45 levels in four different chapters, and as you might expect, the difficulty increases with each level. The game comes accompanied with a chilled and perfectly paired soundtrack, which really does add to the overall ambiance and experience. As a small collective, we've played Tiny Traffic in a couch co-op kind of a way, with us lounging on the sofa with a cup of tea come the end of the day, and also individually, where we've challenged each other in terms of our own little speed run to get through the various sections. All of this comes from a single developer based out of here in the Netherlands, with this the first of their games to come out via Steam. Overall, well, yes, it is relaxing, it is super chilled, and it's a great way of ticking away a few hours, either in bite-sized pieces or in longer chunks of playtime. Like all of the games here in this week's episode, you can find a link to the respective homepage down there in the description. From something chilled and relaxing to something that in places is anything but... 
bytes in tight spaces came out, or should that say entered early access this past February 24th, with it being a turn-based card deck building game with tactical elements and of course some fine old-fashioned, not quite Queensbury rules, fisticuffs and more. The developers suggest this one is all about learning to balance your hand, momentum and positioning to overcome the odds and defeat your adversaries where you build your deck, control the space and live to fight another day. We've had a couple of hours or so with this and yep, it really is rather slick, although as evidenced by the gameplay on screen here now, which we took a few days ago, we really could spend some time getting used to some of the more nuanced systems. There's a lot going on, particularly with the various numbers and values associated with each card and movement, and it's true, we're yet to get the momentum side of the game fully understood. Although having taken to YouTube and Twitch to see what others are making of this one, it does appear you can come up with some beautifully linked and choreographed fights that are great fun to watch. Expected to stay in early access for around a year, well to us at least from what we've played it already feels super polished and we've yet to come across anything buggy or anything to break the immersion of playing. We received a code from the publisher for review purposes with it being available to pick up via Steam, GOG and the Epic Games Store. You can also pick up a demo version to play and for that head on over to the game Steam homepage via the link down in the description. So those were the three main games we played this week. And with all that taken care of, let's head quickly and spend a few moments into looking at some of this week's industry headlines. The always and ever wonderful indie game darling that is Stardew Valley announced the release of an official board game. More than two and a half years in planning and development, the game has been put together by the sole developer and it looks astonishing. By the looks of things, it will feature pretty much everything you could do in the video game, with it being for between 1 and 4 players from ages 13 and up. Sadly, at the moment the game is only available for shipping within the US, and at the time the video goes up, the game is also showing as having been sold out, although developer is, according to Twitter, hoping to have more stock available as soon as possible. In other news, yesterday, February 25th, saw Sony pull together one of their State of Play events. Lasting close to half an hour, three of the featured games grabbed our attention the most, with the first being Kena Bridge of Spirits, where we got to see a whole new gameplay trailer, although most of it was cinematic in its nature, with it now very much looking like a Pixar animated film. It launches on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 August the 24th, with this one almost begging for a physical and collector's edition. So far, those wanting to play it on PC will need to head over to the Epic Game Store, where it's already available for pre-order. Next up, and from Slow Clap Games, who of course brought us Absolver, Sony displayed a new martial arts brawler, which is also headed to PC and the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Thus far, well the trailer doesn't give too much in the way of what we can really expect with Shifu when it launches later in the year, although there's a clear inspiration drawn from cinema with a nod towards martial arts and kung fu storylines. And lastly, from the developers of Hyper Light Drifter, we got to see some more gameplay and information on Solar Ash a third-person action platformer where you play as Rey, a so-called Void Runner looking to save her home from a massive black hole that swallows entire worlds. The combat looks fluid and intuitive, with the key to this one's success we feel being linked with the exciting and dynamic looking platforming, and of course the overall look and feel, which itself, well, it just looks quite magical. Solar Ash should be out later in the year. With those industry highlights covered off, Let's move into the back end of this weekly episode where we cast an eye on some of the games coming out this forthcoming week we're most looking forward to playing. So then in order of launch date and out March 2nd this coming Tuesday, Maquette is headed to Steam as well as the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. All of this is delivering a first person puzzler game using a styling that's instantly recognisable as one being influenced by MC Escher. Everything looks larger than life and we're fairly sure there's a deeper, perhaps more sinister take on what's happening here than the almost dainty and colourful art stylings give way for. Either way, Maquette comes from Annapurna Interactive who so far can't seem to place a foot wrong. 
Loop Heroes up next with again this one coming from another industry heavyweight publisher by way of Devolver Digital. While adding to the multitude of roguelikes that are already out there, it does so with a few additional strings to its bow. Having already spent time with a review copy, again for full disclosure supplied by the publisher, it feels like a winning mashup of deck building, auto battling and match 3 gameplay. It's pleasantly addictive and will keep asking you to come back and have just one or two more runs before you put it down and quite possibly pick it up again for another hour or so playtime. Loop Hero is headed to PC via Steam March the 4th. And lastly for today, something we think plenty console owners will be eagerly awaiting, Kill It With Fire comes out this March 4th. We've played this for the odd jump and giggle on PC since the summer of last year, and there's something rather gratifying about going about the place, discovering those ever not so wonderful spiders from the hundreds of potential hiding spots. If the Switch version is able to create half as much tension as a PC one, there should be plenty of frayed nerves out there as people use what they can from pots and pans and of course a good lick of fire in helping rid these eight-legged friends from wherever you might find them. So there we go, that's all we've got time for for today's episode. Many thanks for watching and supporting the channel and here's hoping you all have a wonderful weekend.